What's going on, family? I'm Ebony Covert, and I'm back at it again with another episode of GTV News. I know we've only been in the year of 2021 for a short period of time, but I am so excited to announce that we will be celebrating 58 years of ministry. That's right, family. That's 58 years of serving our community, serving our city, and just spreading Jesus' love into this world. And as stated in our previous episodes of GTV News, we were able to feed the hungry, close many families during this pandemic, and that's a blessing within itself. Here at GTV, giving is what we do. So the fact that we were able to still give within our community during this pandemic shows that God's hand is on this ministry. So family, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel on Facebook or YouTube so you can keep up with all the latest updates. Also, share this message to someone that you might know who needs to hear this. You never know, you might be a blessing into their life on today. And once again, I'm Ebony Colbert, and that concludes the episode of GTV News. Hey, welcome in, everybody. This is your boy, Pastor Colbert. So glad that you tuned in tonight for Wednesday Night in the Word. Listen, before I get started, I want to send a shout out to all of my Texas people. Uh, most of you uh, are suffering, uh, going through some challenges because of this weather. Uh, Lady Cobra and our family as well. Some of us have lost power, lost water um, because of this inclement weather. Uh, I'm praying that you all are safe and that you are in a safe place. Uh, GTV members, you should have got a call or text from me. Uh, just checking on you guys. I'm praying for you. And uh, I know we're going to get through this together, but for those of you that are in various cities and counties across the state, um, if you are in need of shelter, please contact your local authorities. I'm pretty sure that they have some place where you can make sure that you are warm, okay? So I wanted to get, it, get that out the way, and um, I know that God is going to see us through this, okay? Uh, well, let's get ready for the Word of God. Tonight, I want to start a series that's called Wednesday Wisdom Nuggets. And uh, I want us to walk in wisdom. And we're going to be dealing with uh, the book of Proverbs. So I want you to call and text somebody. Let them know that uh, Pastor Colbert's on and we're about to get into this word tonight. It's going to help us in 2021. But uh, I'm going to need, I just want to just, I just feel that we need some wisdom. Come on, will you just tell somebody, I need some wisdom. How many of you need some wisdom? Come on, tell somebody, I got some issues and I need some answers and I need to hear something from God. <laughs> but I want to deal with the book of Proverbs because uh, Proverbs is dealing with wisdom and how critical it is. And so on Wednesday, we're going to be dealing with that. And Proverbs is a book of moral and ethical instructions dealing with many aspects of life and the teachings of Proverbs and some of you read them like I do all the time it guides readers on godly living yeah how to avoid pitfalls in life and it talks about ungodly conduct well let me just contemporize that let me coponize it basically Proverbs keeps you from acting stupid <laughs> I had to get ghetto because somebody wasn't feeling me Proverbs tells us how to avoid dumb stuff. It, it really does. There's 31 chapters, and I've read them a hundred of times, and I still love them because they speak to wisdom. They speak to making good choices. It's only in Proverbs that you find out why you shouldn't co-sign. It's in Proverbs that you read stuff like it's better to be on top of the roof than in a house with a crazy chick. <laughs> you ought to just type in the comments and say, don't drive a brother to the roof. Go ahead. <laughs> but it's in Proverbs that you read stuff like, if you're lazy, poverty will pounce on you. So you're dealing with slothfulness. You're dealing with how crazy it is to hook up with somebody else's wife or to fall into the lips of the adulteress and how she will suck you in, but then another man will enjoy what you done built because you're going to lose your wife and another brother's going to be laying up in your bed and enjoying your wealth and your house because you had to have that other girl besides your wife. 
Mm. And so we're going to take our time, okay? Tonight is just the introduction. And you're going to love this, not so much in an exegetical and expository way, but there are 31 chapters, and we may not get to all 31, and I'll skip some and deal with some that I think that are prudent to you, but tonight is just the introduction. But Proverbs chapter 4, and you don't have to turn there because I think you know it already. Proverbs 4 verse 7. You've been saying this all of your life. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all your getting, get what? Understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is a critical thing. It's critical. There's a difference. Follow me. There's a difference between wisdom and intelligence. There are some people just by nature, they're smart. God just gave them that good brain. They smart, but dumb. I mean, smart can figure out anything. They can figure out math stuff, historical stuff. They can catch stuff really quick, but they date dummies. Or they make a lot of money, but they don't have none because wisdom hasn't kicked in. There's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. Well, Pastor, do, do you want us to be intelligent? Yeah, yes, I do. But there's a difference between wisdom. Grandma and them, they didn't have much book sense, but she had wisdom. She said, now, sugar, don't you date him. And you said, oh, grandmama. But was grandmama right about Bobo? Come on. <laughs> Come on, you ought to give me some heart. Yeah, she may not have no teeth, but she knew Bobo wasn't right for you because wisdom told her. Amen, everybody? <laughs> and so that's what Proverbs gives us. It's a book of wisdom. So Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says the beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom and with all your acquiring get an understanding. Webster defined wisdom as accumulated philosophic or scientific learning as a knowledge, insight, judgment, and so on. And so at the same time we're talking about the God kind of wisdom. The wisdom that only comes from God, not scientific wisdom, but a wisdom that comes from God. And what is Proverbs giving us? Proverbs is giving us godly wisdom. Proverbs has a uh, timeless appeal because of its, it has great variety of subjects. And those of you who have read Proverbs know that it deals with proper and improper attitude. It deals with conduct, how lazy people don't have much characteristics are referred to repeatedly in a kind of a sense succinct penetrating way it means not to waste words yeah you're talking to somebody and they're going in circles just they're just going around in circles when you're just trying to have a conversation with them and they're just going around in circles and you say please can you be more succinct stop using all the unnecessary stuff get to your point that's how proverbs is yeah, it, it reads, when you read it, it reads succinctly. There's not a lot of wasted words in Proverbs. You, you'll be reading Proverbs and it'll say something like, a lazy man is stupid. Bam! That, that's it. You're like, yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, it's not deep. There's no big words. It's just very succinct. That's why people quote them so much. Because everybody can remember those one-liners in Proverbs. You'll say that it is a powerful little short sentence. So Proverbs, it has a timeless appeal. Yeah, really, really the whole Bible has a timeless appeal. Yeah, repeat this because you can read yesterday newspaper and you're not going to feel it because you're like, man, I read that yesterday or read last month edition of Sports Illustrated or some other book. And it's like, I saw that already. But now, how can you open the, up the Bible and shout every time you read something that you already read already? Because the Bible is alive. The word of God is alive. And so in Proverbs, like the rest of the Bible, has a timeless appeal. Yeah. So the definition of Proverbs, which, which comes from a verb meaning to be like or to compare with, a proverb is a statement that makes a comparison or summarizes a common experience. So who is the progenitor of Proverbs? It's not a trick question. Who wrote the book of Proverbs? It was Solomon. King Solomon, David's son, who built the temple. The wisest man of all times. How do you know he's the wisest man of all time? 
because that's what God called him. And if God tells you that you're the wisest person that has ever lived, then you are the wisest person that has ever lived. So Solomon, he wrote the book of Proverbs, and we're going to hear from the wisest person that has ever lived. Now, if you go to 1 Kings chapter 3, if you go to 1 Kings chapter 3, and I'm going to read from the NLT Bible, and let's begin uh, around verse 3. And it says, Solomon loved the Lord and followed all the decrees of his father, David, except that Solomon too offered sacrifices and burned incenses at the local places of worship. Now go to verse 5. It says, that night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And God said, what do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Now let me pause right there because what if God woke you up and asked you that? And for real, though, what would your response be? Look at y'all telling stories. I know some of y'all say, oh, I just want more of you, God, whatever. <laughs> you be talking about, listen, I want a Louis purse, a Gucci, that guy that I like in the cubicle, pay these bills. You're not crazy because there are some things that you want. But what if God woke you up and say, ask me for what you want? You got, you got one shot. What do you want? What you want? That's, that's deep, everybody. So, so God wakes him up, and this is not a fairy tale. This is biblical. The Lord wakes him up and says, what do you want? And his response is so interesting. Look at verse 6. Solomon replied, you showed great and faithful love to your servant, my father, David, because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued to show this great and faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Verse 7, now, O Lord my God, you have made me king instead of my father David, but I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. Mm. And in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation, here I am. In the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous, they cannot be counted. Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? Oh, pray for your pastor. When you pray for your boy, pray for me. Because sometimes when I stand up here or when I'm in the pulpit, I pray, God, give me some wisdom. Give me some wisdom because I feel like a little child. Now, I'm going to leave now. now I'm, I'm going to leave. But in my private time, I pray, Lord, give me some wisdom. But here's what he prays for. The same thing that I pray for. Give me wisdom. And by the way, by the way, whoever asked that question, God, give me wisdom about this child I have. <laughs> my child just said something to me and, and Lord, I need your wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom of how to handle this guy that I just married. Lord, give me wisdom not to be ghetto, but not, a, not to be a pushover like other women I know. Give me balance on how to do all of this. And let me tell you something. Every wife and mother that is watching, every husband, every father, say, God, give me wisdom on how not to make some dumb moves. I mean, I mean, he asked, Solomon, he asked for wisdom. This is good. So let, let's read. He said, watch this, give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong for who by himself mm, is able to govern this great people of yours. Verse 10 said, the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, mm, I will give you what you ask for. Oh my God, I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has and ever will have. Now, it is with that in mind that I can say emphatically that there is no person alive that is as wise as Solomon. And nor will they ever be. For the Bible said for no one, no one will ever, ever have as much wisdom as Solomon. It is that Solomon who wrote the book of Proverbs. 
I'm introducing this tonight, and I want you to catch it, y'all. I want you to catch this. Solomon said, look what he said. He said, give me wisdom. Now, here's the cold-blooded part. He also, he's also, Solomon is the most richest man that has ever lived. Mm, catch that. He never said, when God asked him what he wants, he never said, let me be the richest man. He said, let me be the most wise. God said, because you asked me for me, I'm going to give you stuff that you didn't ask for. Oh, I feel like having some church with somebody tonight. I wish I could get somebody to just stop asking for a man and fix my marriage and fix my child. And I just wish I had some people out there that would just shout, God, more of you, more of you. And can I suggest to you that when you go after him, he will go after the things that you need and want and make a way out of no way. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He asked for wisdom and God said, because you didn't ask me for stuff, I'm going to give it to you. And by the way, let me tell you something. Ain't nothing wrong for asking for stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But the problem when you, the problem is when you ask for stuff before you ask for him. That's the problem. Yeah, that when you ask for stuff before you ask for him. And there are single people that are what I know you're lonely and you're not crazy. But I dare you to ask for more of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you'll be going after him and some man will grab you by the hand and say, hey, girl, I was sent by God. Come on, let's go have some lunch. You won't even know what happened. You'll say, Pastor, this man will grab my hand and say, God sent him. And I was just going to Bible study. I was just going to church. And this brother man just grabbed me by the hand and, and said, let's go to lunch. Y'all looking at me crazy. Y'all not feeling me tonight. Let's go, let's go to Proverbs 1. But I'm serious. I'm, I'm introducing tonight. This is just the introduction. But go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, it says, the Proverbs of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the sayings of understanding, to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the naive, listen young people, listen, to the youth, knowledge and discretion. Now that, that grabbed me, that grabbed me, to the naive, to the naive, come here sister girl, you're beautiful, but you're silly. <laughs> you got a good heart, but you're silly. You're silly for brothers. You're silly for men. You know, silly of me he, to think that I, that should be your song. You should put that on your phone. Every time a man come by, silly of me to think that should be your ringtone. Come on, you ought to just type in the keypad, 35 and older, 35 and older. You wouldn't know that song unless you were 35 and older. But it says, watch this, to give prudence to the naive, but to the youth, mm, to the youth. Now, this tells me that I should read Proverbs to my children. But can I, can I challenge all of us parents and ask who has spent time in Proverbs with your babies? First of all, let me admit that I have not. Mm -hmm. But but I, I will, especially with our, last, with our baby girl, because all my years of studying, I never caught that. It says to the youth. Now, see, Proverbs is not just a book for old people only because the younger your baby can get a hold of wisdom, they'll find out why they shouldn't co-sign and mess up their debt and then mess up their name and then act a fool when they get married and deal with people that they're not married to. So, so it hit me, y'all. It hit me. It says to the youth, knowledge. So I want to challenge all parents with school-aged children, go over Proverbs while we're studying this, okay? Okay, let's read, let's read. It says, As a, a wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel to understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. See, this is the first proverb that I think most of you know. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's the first proverb that leaps at me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools, ooh, fools. Oh, don't call nobody no fool, pastor. Well, the Bible do. The Bible says fools despise wisdom and instruction. It says the fear of the Lord 
is the beginning of wisdom and the fear of the Lord. There is not a kind of fear. That's not a kind of fear like you scared of Chucky or Jason or, or, or a Freddy Krueger or something like that. This is reverent fear. This is what it's talking about. It's talking about reverent fear, not a scary fear. It's a reverent fear. It's the kind of fear that my children have of me. Everybody got that one child that, that you like, you're going to whoop them and they're going to get straight A's. And then you got that other child that you got to choke and slam. <laughs> but here's the point that I'm making. I want my children to have a reverent fear of me. They kiss me and hug me, but then there's that look on their face that say things like, uh-oh. Mm, oh, oh I, I, I can't go that far. See, we should have a reverent fear of God just like that. Yeah, that God loved me, grace is on me, but I ain't going to be playing with God's grace because he'll pop my behind. I ain't playing with God's grace. Yeah, I love him. I know he loved me. He's forgiven me of my past stuff. He is gracious, but I ain't going to be playing with him now. I have reverent fear. But then the Bible says, fools. Mm-hmm despise wisdom. Yeah, fools despise wisdom. And someone has once said that the worst fool is an old fool. <laughs> I mean, have you seen a woman who's 60 years old who thinks she's 18? I mean, she just out there wearing mini skirts and all that type of stuff. Or, or, or you seen this old man that's 70 years old, he thinks he's 19. <laughs> I, I, I say that to say that time and age should bring some wisdom. Yeah, it, it should. It really should. Time and age should bring some wisdom. My my parent, my, my mother, and my uncle have said some stuff to me. We've had conversations, and I'll say, you know what? You never said that to me. And they say, because you wasn't ready yet. You wasn't ready yet. Because at 21, the wisdom wasn't there yet. There's something you can see in marriage yet. So there are some people that are watching me that is old enough to be my mother. And thank you. For respecting me as your pastor. But there's some wisdom that you got from living that I don't have yet. So I'm always careful with my older members. I know I'm, the, I'm their pastor, but they are 30 years older than me. And she's old enough to be my mother. Yeah, to be my mother can't, can't get around that. I can't get around that. There's something that, that my church mother knows just from living. Yeah, yeah. So, so that is a wisdom. That's the kind of wisdom that comes with life. But however, this right here that we're dealing with, this is biblical wisdom. That's in Proverbs. Yeah, every person needs to get a hold of that. You need to get a hold of it. So, so look at the text again. It says, fools, verse 7, Proverbs 1, despise. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools, just fools. Now, everybody that's watching me have busted a fool's move. Now, come on. I know y'all, I know I ain't getting no heart right there, but you ought to be real. Come on, quit all that faking. Everybody that's watching me have busted a fool move because I, I know I have. I know I have. And the reason why I'm teaching this series is because I want this word on you. I want this wisdom on you. If you read the top of Proverbs or open your Bible, it says tied around your neck. Yeah, it says that you may have live a long life and peace. That you have long life and peace. And can I tell you that when you walk in wisdom, man, you have long life. I, I was just uh, sharing and was talking to one of the young couples that Lady Cobra and I, we mentor. And I was talking to the brother and uh, I said, man, you know what? I'm jealous of y'all. I'm jealous. They, they're about 24, 25 years old. And I was thinking, here is this 24, 25 year old couple in church, in church, in Bible study. You know, and and they in the Lord, and I, I I told I told him very few of us was in church when we were married that young. Yeah, half of us didn't know why we got married or who we were married to. We just we were just married. Babies made us get married. Life confusion, no God in our life, and I told him that I was jealous of, but in a good way, in a good way, because I said you had you have a chance to sit under teaching that I didn't at that age. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 you, so your marriage, and and, and I and I told him this. I, I prophesied to him. That's I prophesied to that brother. I said, you know what? You're gonna go through some stuff, but I prophesied that you won't have some of the drama that we had. 
Because you guys at 24, 25, you come to church, you listen to teaching, you listen to my teaching, they both tithing, they're living right, they're doing the right stuff, coming to counseling sessions, coming to kingdom couples, activities, and marriage seminars, and empowerment. And can I tell you what I prophesied to them? I said some stuff they won't have to go through because when you embrace teaching and instructions, you can have more peace than a person who don't. Mm. Can, I, can I tell you, I love all of you. You know why I love all of you? Because you came online on Bible study. You came to Bible study because you know what you saying tonight, God, I need more than a man or money or a woman. I need your wisdom and your knowledge so I can have long life and peace. And peace is better than money. <laughs> and peace is better than a house. Y'all ain't saying nothing because if you ain't got no peace, what difference does it make when you got all of this stuff and all of that? Will you just do me a favor? Favor, just type in the comment and say, since I got peace, I feel better. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. Just say, type in the comments and tell your virtual neighbor, since I got peace, I feel better. Come on. When you tell them, I may not have everything I want. I may not have the biggest house or the biggest car, but I sure got some peace. The Bible says, the text says, fools despise wisdom. <laughs> How long have I been telling you to tie? And you've been tied in like every other month, you know, not consistency. See, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you because I'm a blessed man. How long I've been telling you that I don't care how cute he is, baby. You done had enough sex to hold you for the next four years. <laughs> now, I know you're lonely, but just hold on. See, you done had enough to, to hold on for a while now. Come on, can God have your body for a whole 18 months? Can God have your body one time in your life since you've been 20? Can you present your body as a living sacrifice for just 18 months? You're going to get it, but just hold on for a minute. How long? I've been telling you married couples. Yeah, married couples. Come here. How long I've been telling you married couples stop treating each other like a dog? <laughs> Me and Lady Colbert, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have an emergency relationship series because let me tell you something. We've been seeing attack on marriages, especially since we've been in this pandemic. We have seen an attack on marriage, and it's like from the leadership on down. Everybody wants to get separated. Everybody wants to get divorced. Listen, if you two will practice out loving each other. If you will just compete and say, you know what? I bet I'll love you better than you love me. I bet I can out submit you uh, better than you submit to me. If you can stop being selfish and selfless. See, marriage can be a trip, but the word of God, and I know marriage can be hard. I know it. Singles, I've been giving you wisdom and instructions. And if you want to be a fool, <laughs> get married without counseling. And then the same couple will be coming back to me in six months and say, Pastor, oh, we ain't going to make it. Because, see, once you get that sex wall for you and you wake up and then you look over that side of the bed and say, you know what? You crazy. <laughs> she crazy. And you broke. Mm. And you don't go to my church. Woo! Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Just type in the comments and just tell your neighbor, stop acting a fool. Go ahead. Stop acting a fool. <laughs> but uh, seriously. The Bible said fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools don't like wisdom and instruction. They don't like, yeah, they, 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 they'll shout. But yeah, they don't want no instruction and wisdom. But you got to know what you're shouting about. Okay, I'm out of time. I'm going I'm to give you this one last thing. I'm, I'm going to skip chapter 2 of Proverbs. Uh, that's going to be your homework, chapters 1 and 2. Uh, in its entirety, that's, that's going to be in your. That's going to be your homework. Promise me now that you're you're going to do that in the morning for your devotion. Because in chapter two, just giving you an overview, chapter two, Solomon really talks about the criticality of chasing wisdom. He he calls wisdom her. Yeah, he says chasing her. How how critical it is to go after wisdom, and he's becoming the defender uh, of the need for wisdom in your life, and that's what he's doing in chapters one. In chapter 2 and then it starts getting good in chapter 3 and this is where I want to pick up and then I'll give you a couple of them and then we'll stop and then we'll pick up next Wednesday but but chapter 3 he says my son do not forget my teaching 
but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Here it is. Don't let kindness mm -hmm, and truth leave you. He said, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart. He said, long life and peace will be added to you if you keep God's commandment and try to do right. And then he says something that most people skip because look at verse four, everybody, so that you will find favor. Hmm. And don't miss this. This is critical and good repute in the sight of God and who else? Man. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why that's critical is because people say, you know what? If people don't hate you, you're not a good Christian. That's not in the Bible. Jesus did say that you will have some enemies. Beware when people speak well of you, but don't take that to the extreme and say, nobody like me because I'm a good Christian. No, no. Don't nobody like you because you're crazy or you're mean or you're not following God. The Bible says somebody will like you. Mm -hmm. He said, when you follow after God, everybody, try not to run out of your house. Don't, when I say this, try not to run out of your house. But when you follow God, he says, I'm going to give you favor. Woo! Watch this. He said, in my sight, but not only in my sight, and even in favor in the sight of man, which means you're going to walk in places and get stuff that you don't qualify for. Oh, y'all don't hear me tonight. Y'all don't hear me because what I'm trying to tell y'all tonight, there's a favor on your life that your boss is giving you jobs that you don't qualify for. You getting ready to get a house that your credit don't qualify for. Favor is going to find you. Can I tell you doors are getting ready to open in your life because everybody don't have to like you, just the right person do. Ooh, y'all just missed that. I wish I had somebody that's here. Ooh, I wish I had somebody that's watching me that would just type in the comments, favor on my life. Favor is on my life. And y'all can dispute this if y'all want to, but I declare over seven of y'all that are watching me right now that 2021 is about to be the year of favor for you. Oh, I know what 2020 has been, and I know what 2021 have already started, but I declare over for over seven of y'all that 2021 is about to be the year of favor, that everything you've been believing God for, he's about to make some man give it to you. Your boss is going to give you a raise. Somebody's going to give you some money. You're going to walk in the car dealership, and they're going to take $5,000 off the car. Your child is going to get tuition and you ain't going to know how it got paid for because somebody in the academic office is going to say, you know what, give that boy a scholarship. You know what, I declare favor over my life. Yes, I do. I declare favor over my life, GTV Nation. And I'm not the most handsome. I'm not the most of anything. But there's a favor that's on my life. I don't know how I got here. I don't know how it happened. But favor is on me. And I'm receiving my favor. Yeah, I'm receiving my favor. Everything I'm walking, ooh, I'm walking in the favor of God. I don't know how we're going to grow GTV, but God's going to grow it because favor is on my life. People are going to come all over the world. People are going to send checks and tithes all over the world. And you, when we come back to church after this pandemic, you're going to walk in GTV and you're going to look up and see standing room only because favor is on my life. I'm calling money from the north, south, east, and west, everything that I need. And can I tell you, in your life, yes, in your life, you ought to say, favor, find me now. Ooh, go ahead, go ahead. Come on, will you do me a favor and just type in the comments and say, favor, find me now. He said, God said, I'll give you favor. Mm. I'll give you favor, and not only will I give you favor in my sight, but also in the sight of men. Start expecting people to bless you and read the Bible. Forget me, read the Bible, because the Bible says that if you honor God's word, if you try to walk right, he said, I'll give you favor in the sight of God and in the sight of man, because whatever he's going to do for you, whatever God's going to do for you, he's going to do it from a man. <laughs> you better read your Bible, read your Bible. Luke 6, 38 says, give, and it shall be given to you. Press down, shake it together, run it over, shall men 
give it to your bosom. That's why you got to start saying, no, thank you. See, mama meant well. You know, my mama meant well when she taught you to say, always say, no, thank you. No, mama, you got it wrong because somebody going to give me something. Yeah, I received that. I'm going to receive. When, when, when you woke up to me and put money in my hand, I received that. When you put, when you blow my cash app up or zell me, I received that. Favor is on my life. And if I can teach you and if I can preach to you, what's wrong with you giving me something? Uh, I got to eat just like you got to eat. And you got to learn how to receive. Yeah, you got to learn. I've I, I learned to receive. I'm not turning nothing out there. I receive. <laughs> Give me my flower. I receive. So, see, some of you been through so much that receiving is an issue for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, it, it, receiving uh, is an issue for you because you think that if you receive that you owe the person something. You know how we get, uh, I don't want nobody to give me nothing. Can't nobody say they did anything for me. That's why you ain't got nothing. Baby, you better receive. You better receive. In fact, you ought to just type in the comments to your virtual neighbor and just tell them, are you the one or should I wait for another? Go ahead. Come on, you ought to tell them any way you bless me. I'll be satisfied. Put something in my hand. Speak over my life. Pay my bills for me. God is going to use somebody. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there because I feel the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> oh, my God. God, I had one more verse to give you tonight, but forget about it. Come on, let's just shout for a minute. Can I get about six of y'all to get up from your computer or from your phone and praise God that favor is on the way to your house? Come on, somebody else say favor is on the way to my house. Come on, I just, just five people right now. You need to take off running around your house and run into your favor. Come on, will you just do that? Come on, somebody just shout favor, favor, favor. Come on, favor, 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 favor coming my way. Come on, favor on my children. Favor over my house. Favor on my mama. Favor on my church. Favor on my pastor. Come on, somebody just shout favor. Ooh, ah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. I'm going to give you a few more seconds. Mm. Come on, come on. Give me some hearts out there. I told you the hearts are the new hallelujah. I can't see you right now. We're not physically in church, but we can still have church. Come on. I know we don't normally shout on a Wednesday night, but something is getting ready to happen. Can I release somebody tonight? I'm going to give you one more, about 30 more seconds to dance until favor falls on your house. Everybody that's believing God for a breakthrough in your life, come on, don't wait till the battle is over, but shout right out of the I feel so much power on me right now. You ought to just lift your hands right now because I break every stronghold, everything that's been holding you hostage. The spirit of poverty is leaving your house right now. The spirit of bondage, the spirit of depression is leaving your house right now. It's being released out of here right now. Every person that's watching the spirit of suicide there's a demonic spirit that's on this line come on oh i feel it i feel it somebody's mind is messed up and i speak a cleansing over your mind that you will not leave here and log off this bible study the same way you logged on but the power of god is manifesting right now. Everybody, come on, that's, that's watching me, that is spirit-filled, that's filled with the spirit. I need everybody on this call, on this line, to pray right now. Come on, release. Come on, release is on this call right now. Release is on this broadcast right now. It's time to seek God with your whole heart. It's time out for just meeting our quota. Talking about, well, I was there last Sunday. I ain't got to do it this Sunday. I ain't got to go there. I don't have to log on the Bible study. I don't have to be on time for church. Seek God is an everyday thing. Yeah, seeking God is an everyday thing. Come on. You need to cry out, God, give me your wisdom. More of you. Come on, open your mouth right now and cry out until you get a breakthrough. I don't hear her. Hallelujah. Come on, out of your belly. Come on, just let it flow. Let it flow. Mm. All right, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I hope you enjoyed this teaching. Come on, but meet me next Wednesday as we're going to have wisdom on Wednesday. We're going to walk in wisdom in 2021. Oh, yes, we are. If you need prayer, call that number. Listen, I, I want you to get an offering tonight. I want you to get an offering that say, I want favor on your life. 
Come on. I, I want some men tonight to give a favor offering. I need some women tonight to give a favor offering. Come on. You need to get a 20 or 50 or something. Come on. You need to get a some seed that says, I want favor on my life. Come on. Will you do that? Come on. There are many ways to give. Come on. You can use it by cash out. Give a five. Come on. But you need to give tonight because I feel the anointing of God right now. Hallelujah. Listen, if you need prayer, if you want to connect to this ministry, call that number. Look on our website. There are many ways you can connect with us. And uh, we love you to be a part of the GTV Nation, okay? Well, I'm out of time, but I'm certainly not out of message. Join me this Sunday for Sunday morning worship. Oh, did not first lady preached on last Sunday. My God. Mm, it's time to rise up. That was her message. And I'm rising up in 2021. I am. I'm, I'm, I'm determined more than ever. But join us this Sunday at 10 a.m. And uh, remember this. Why settle for good when great is available? You all be safe. I love you. And I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye.